Happy Friday. So today we are going to talk about how a cyclone separator works. And I know a lot of you that already use these might not think of a cyclone as a separator, but in fact it is. So the way that they work is uh, to separate air, most of the time to separate clean air from dirty air. So if you think of this as everything being an airstream, uh, you'll, you'll understand the concept pretty fast. So here we have a blower. This is under the pressure uh, so I'm going to put a P here. So there's two configurations that you can use a cyclone separator under. One of them is under pressure. And this is the way we did it at first. This is the way a lot of people do it. It's the simpler way. It's the way that costs less money up front. However, it does cost you more later. And we'll get into that in a minute. So this way here, you would have your material coming into the blower. The material would get blown up by the blower, go up and over through the cyclone. Now, once it reaches the cyclone walls, so we'll just make a, um, we'll make, we'll pretend a top view here. So this here is your inlet. So what we have here, and this is your cyclone. What happens when the material reaches here, the heavier particles have higher velocity because they're heavier. So they come and touch the outside wall first. So if you're imagining a stream of air, with some dust, some copper, some aluminum, whatever it may be. As it's going through, that material will hit the sidewall first. As it's hitting that sidewall first, it slows down because of friction. So now you have that material that's going round and round that cyclone slowing down. And as it's slowing down, it comes down to the bottom and it just gently falls out the bottom. Now, you end up with the vortex in here. And with that vortex, you, uh, the air has to go somewhere and the air goes back up through the top. So as you're putting material in, you'll have all of your heavies go around the outside. Now, if this is sized properly, you'll get this to remove even fine particles of dust. Now there is a limit. There's some dust that's so light uh, and you will get some dust that will fly out through the top. Now, the other method that uh, we use and that we'd like to use over this original method is we like putting this cyclone under a vacuum. And the way that we do that is we put an airlock down here. So I'm just gonna move this here out of our way. So we'll put an airlock here and this has rubber flaps in it. And now what happens is we will use a blower and we'll tie the vacuum end of the blower to the top of the cyclone. So now here, I'm gonna erase this little blower here this blower no longer exists, and all we are doing is connecting it to our source. It could be a granulator, vertical mill, turbo mill, whatever it is. We're connecting it to the source of where we're collecting the material. It could be a dosing hopper, and the material goes up in through here, gets vacuumed up, and the reason it's getting vacuumed up is because I have this whole cyclone under vacuum. So now when I'm pulling from the blower, the air wants to, it wants to pull air through this, and because this here is sealed, it's a sealed airlock, and this airlock is spinning, then uh, it has no other choice but to grab the air from over here. So you're creating a vacuum through your pipe. This is better in a lot of ways. Number one is you don't have leakage through your system. Because everything's under vacuum, uh, everything wants to go into it. So for example, if you had a hole here, and this was under pressure, you would have light dust coming out of this hole. If you have a hole here and you have it under vacuum, you might get heavier particles, copper or whatever, that want to fall out, but you're not going to get air blowing into your environment. So that's number one. Um, hopefully you don't have any holes in your system, it's a nice sealed system. The other thing is, you're not running material through your blower. So when you're running, running material through your blower, you could have, um, you know, aluminum is, is really a, a good example of this. Aluminum, a lot of people don't realize, is extremely abrasive. I had a customer that was running aluminum copper radiators. One of the very first machines we installed uh, to do aluminum copper radiators, they ran, uh, we had it in the pressure configuration, and it turned the, uh, the, the impeller into Swiss cheese within like two or three months. Uh, and Ernie, if you're watching this video, you remember. Uh, so the, the, the impeller just completely just ate itself up. And then we went to different materials, higher, uh, uh, higher strength metals and everything. And 
not long after that, we decided, hey, you know what? Let's use this method. It costs a little bit more because we have to put an airlock and it's another motor to run and these rubber flaps will wear over time. However, I would way rather change rubber flaps than to change a fan wheel that costs, can cost a couple thousand dollars depending on which strength uh, fan wheel you're using. So if you are one of the early owners of one of our machines, you definitely have the pressure model. And uh, about 10 or 15 years ago, we switched over to this style here and that's how we've been doing it ever since. Now, uh, this method and this concept is used also for liquids, for gases. Uh, there's many, many different uh, applications, but this is for application here. I wanted to, to, to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about it. So when I, when we have that discussion, we're talking on the phone, we're talking about pressure versus vacuum. This is what we're referring to, the two methods uh, of separating, and that's how this works. So hopefully this video is helpful. I know there's a lot of videos that show this online that's, that's probably more in detail with 3D graphics and everything, but uh, a lot of you guys are asking me, hey, how, you know, which, which way is better? How does it work? How does, how does this really, what do I need a cyclone? Oh, that's another thing. A lot of guys ask me, like, why do I even need this? And, and here's why. If you are, you have an air table, most of the time we put these over the next spot. So say you have an air table here, and we're just gonna draw a crude box with the air table going through. So your heavies would be coming out here and your lights would be coming out here. The last thing you wanna do is have a blower that is blowing into here. Cause now you have not just material coming and dropping onto here. You have, you know, imagine having your leaf blower, take your leaf blower and then just put it in the top here and just blow it. You're just gonna blow everything out the front, out the back. It's gonna make a giant mess. So that's why you need a cyclone. Cyclones when you're moving material, uh, and you're moving it by air, you need the cyclone to separate the airflow from the material. You want the material to just drop gently here so it's not interfering with the airflow that's blowing from below. So hopefully that's helpful. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Happy Friday. Is that a bug? No, uh, that's sinking. What's happening? Oh, that's for sync of the video where I look for the exact frame that my hands clap. Yeah. So I can get all the video and audio synced. So that's that. the whole reason they do that's that. That's why they do that.